Thank you. Thank you, Ron. And uh, we roll on with more sports and Les Levine. Good evening, everyone. There you see the number, 216-575-0403. If you are watching this on Sports Channel, however, don't waste your time. We are uh, doing this show on a uh, Thursday night, and the date is August 7th. So if you're watching at any other time than that, just uh, ignore. We'll be like the men in black. Where we'll just zap you, and you will forget the phone number. But if you are watching now on Cablevision, 216-575-0403, is the number to call. Hal Lebovitz, the guy in the know, is with us. Uh, we are up to day number eight of the Boy Sherman David Modell secret word of the day. Say that secret word, a, uh, a word you hear in just about every baseball game, very important part of a baseball team. Uh, if you uh, say that secret word, we'll send you the cigars from the Cousin Cigar Company at 18th and Euclid, as well as the one on Chagrin Boulevard across from the Eaton Collection. You can reach us at email, let's talk at sportschannel.com, let's talk at sportschannel.com. And you can email uh, questions or, uh, or uh, suggestions for the show. If you ask us a question or make a statement, we will be happy to respond. And uh, we'll put it on the World Wide Web. It's less talk at sportschannel.com. You can also respond to our question of the week. And this week's question of the week is, do you favor baseball geographical realignment, which would effectively do away with the American and the National League? And by the way, 76%, make that 71% in a recent poll conducted by USA Today in three cities, including, including Cleveland, said 76% are in favor of that, which means you Clevelanders would be happy to finish behind both Atlanta and Florida in next year's uh, Eastern Division of the American League. Also, uh, you can uh, send us uh, stuff, cash preferably, more sports and less Levine, P.O. Box 22715, Cleveland, Ohio, 44122. Well, as you know, I am the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Cleveland sports, and I'm about getting ready to revive an old radio bit, the Sports Courts Reports, where I would recap the daily brushes with the law of our idolized athletes. Now, you'd think that would be tough to do every day, but you'd be surprised there's always enough material. Just look at the past couple of days. Barry Switzer, Allen Iverson, and now Bam Morris. I've got many friends in the legal community, probably too many, but one of them told me he's got a case where his client is clearly guilty, but he's now planning on using the new popular Switzer defense that has nothing to do with the Cowboys' plan on how to use Deion Sanders this year. It's the opposite of the old adage, ignorance is no excuse for the law. Not that Switzer wasn't aware of the law that prohibits guns on airplanes. It just means he's totally ignorant. Now, in a time when we are and should be all concerned about airline safety, you or I, under similar circumstances, would be locked up, and rightfully so, with no chance of leniency. Now, Jerry Jones fined Switzer $75,000. So what? Why is Jones the sole judge and jury on this case? Carrying a gun on a plane is a federal offense, not an NFL offense. By the way, notice how the words offense and defense are used both in football and the legal system. They just pronounce them differently. Anyway, Switzer is very lucky that Jones took over. He should be punished to the full extent of the law in addition to the $75,000. Although uh, being uh, uh, penalized, the full extent of the law might be uh, e even a little tougher uh, to work for Jones than to be uh, sentenced to that. Well, as far as Iverson and Morris are concerned, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. This is the second offense for Iverson, and Morris clearly broke his probation terms. It should be ban Morris, not bam Morris. It's time we quit giving lip service on these issues. Ban them for life and see if that doesn't put an end to these contagious diseases. We're going to get a chance to go on the road. We're going out to Oakland in, uh, well, actually about two weeks from now. We'll go out to see the Oakland A's. You've got a chance to join uh, Action Travel in Chicago and Kansas City by calling them now at 1-800-391-1167. And make sure you get in on that trip going out on Continental Airlines, the official airlines of the Cleveland Indians, through Action Travel, an official travel partner of the tribe. Looking forward to the trip in Oakland. That one's closed out, but Chicago and Kansas City has some spaces available. Call 1-800-391-1167. We'll come on back with Hal Lebovitz, the guy in the know, after we take this time out. You're watching more sports and Les Levine brought to you in part by the Pierre's French Ice Cream Company. Bobby Dorr. Wow, you know, I, I gotta talk about Bobby Dorr. We'll do that in a minute. 
Uh, Bobby Dorr from the Boston Red Sox. He, uh, Hal, is he a Hall of Famer? Yes, Bobby Dorr is a Hall of Famer. I want to talk about that in a minute. This Saturday, August 9th, live thoroughbred racing at Thistledown continues. Every fan with a regular paid admission receives a sleeve of Spalding Molitor golf balls complete with the Thistledown logo. And one of every five sleeves will give someone a chance for a putt on the specially designed Thistledown putting green. The 20 contestants who either sink the putt or come closest will compete in the finals for a chance at $2,000 and a trip for two to Myrtle Beach. The golf balls are uh, available while supplies last. Send your name, address, city, state, zip code, and birth date on any card uh, to Thistledown if you can't make it there. And uh, limit is one card per person. Gates open at 11.30 with the first race of Saturday at 12.55. Well, that voice you already heard without uh, being properly introduced is that of the guy in the know, Hal Leverwitz. Good evening. Good evening. How are you, sir? Your flaps are down, so let's, <laughs> let's take off. Let's fly off, and hopefully nobody will get on this plane with, uh, with a gun, as Barry Switzer did. Uh, Bobby Doerr, uh, and I, you know, sometimes something sticks in your mind about somebody, and, and for whatever reason, there's a lot of useless knowledge going up in my head, and some that is wrong also. And I asked Dick Goddard about this once. It seems to me, and if anybody out there knows this answer uh, and can verify if I'm right, please let us know. Bobby Doerr, who was a great player with the Red Sox, I believe also coached for them a little bit yes, after. He did. I think that he had a brief stint here in the early to mid-50s as a television weatherman. Does that mean anything to strike a, a, any note in your, in your uh, a brain of useful knowledge? Les, I think in that brain where you say a lot of things are rattling, yes. that one was rattling wrong. You think that's rattling wrong? Yeah. Well, Dick Goddard said about the same thing, that that didn't happen. But for some reason, I think Bobby Doerr spent a couple of months as a weatherman for one of the TV stations. I'm, I'm going to, you know what? He's still alive. Oh, he, sure yeah, is, he's still absolutely. alive. I'm going to find him. a very nice man. You and know where get, I can find him? I, I can get his number for you. Please do. Okay. Because I have to, I have to ask him that silly question. I will. Okay. He's I'll fit. He's a sweetheart of a guy. Excellent. Well, all weathermen are. <laughs> <laughs> Hal Ebovitz is with us. All right, uh, one thing to clean up here before we uh, get to what's going on. Our lines are open at the number you see. Uh, if you are watching this on cable vision, if you're watching it on Sports Channel, you're too late. 216-575-0403. Frank Derry from Indians, Inc. is a coach of his son's Little League team. And he said he made a total fool of himself when the following play Not took Frank. place. Frank. Frank Derry. He says he did. I wasn't <clears> there. I, I would guess that he did, but I wasn't there. Man on third, and it uh, doesn't matter how many outs. The pitcher goes into his stretch, and the third baseman is playing 10 feet behind the bag. And he stretches, looks over at the guy leading off third, and decides to uh, have a pickoff attempt. But the third baseman doesn't. It wasn't a timed play or anything. Third baseman stays where he is, 10 feet behind the bag. And the pitcher wisely doesn't throw at the bag. He throws to the player 10 feet behind the bag. Frank Derry went nuts, yelling, that's a balk, it's a balk, so what is it? Not a balk. Not a balk? A legal play. In fact, he didn't have to throw at all to third base. Oh, he could have faked it? He could have faked to throw to sure, third. Sure, sure. Only first base. Right. You must throw to the base. Okay, now, similar situation with a man on first and the first baseman playing behind the bag. The pitcher takes the stretch, goes to make the move on the pickoff and sees the first baseman isn't going, and he too throws 10 feet behind the bag. Because it's the first base, that in fact is a balk. Right. Frank? Happened in the National League last year. Yeah. Uh, Which way? It, uh, at first base? The, the pitcher threw to the first baseman, right. who was way off the bag, right. and they sent the man to second. Well, <clears throat> when you think about it, he's better off doing that than throwing it to the bag sure. where it could be two bases, where the guy could go all the way to third. The thing is step off the rubber. Okay. Well, Back there off. you have it. Uh, Frank Derry, you made a complete idiot of yourself. But that, believe me, that wouldn't be the first time, <laughs> nor the last. Just kidding, Frank. Just kidding. All right, so I gave you no homework assignment. You got oh, off easy this right. week. So, uh, so what's going on here? What do you think? The Barry Switzer situation, what do you think about it? Well, the guy, whether you believe his story or not, and I'm inclined to believe it because it's so far-fetched <laughs> far that it had to happen, the man is responsible, and, and the, the, the identity of the, of the Dallas Cowboys is so bad now, and Jerry Jones is trying to change it and make it America's team again, that he, he got, had to penalize him and 75000 bucks of money going to charity, I don't feel sorry for No, I don't either. But, but uh, again, mm -hmm. if it was you or I, uh, I don't think they would have bought that story so easily. It's, uh, it's so imaginative that it has to be real. <laughs> well, you're a writer. I, I couldn't imagine <laughs> You it. couldn't come up with and it. And I don't think Barry could. No, I, you Barry. know, can I just tell you something? I, I believe, and I've met Barry, and I interviewed him, and to be honest with you, he was the worst interviewee really? that I've ever had. I, I found myself, this was... Uh, in between his Oklahoma gig and, and uh, um, 
uh, in the Cowboys, and I found him to be a not very nice man. Now, I hate to say that. I have to hate to form opinions. You know, I, I was just there as the interviewer, and we had him on on radio for, I think, an hour and a half or two hours. He was hawking his book, and I just found him very unlikable. Well, I'm surprised because he can be a charmer. Yeah. And here he's trying to sell a book. So something must have happened. Maybe. Maybe he had a gun in his pocket. <laughs> well, I don't want to know that. I don't want to know that. Hey, by the way, in addition to our shows being shown on Sports Channel at various times, we can also be heard the very next day on WTIG in Massillon in the Massillon Canton area. That's 990 on the dial. So we do the show here on Cablevision from 6 to 7. The following day from 5 to 6, you can catch it on WTIG. Are you ready to, to go to the phones here? If the People are ready to listen. I'm ready All to talk. All right. We will go to Mitch. Mitch, you're on more sports than Les Levine. Go ahead. How you doing, Les? Well, how are you? What's going on? Oh, I just want to say that tonight I'm looking forward to see, uh, you know, the pitching again with uh, John Smy. Wow, the, the I.I.I. man showed up. <laughs> yeah, we were wondering. That's the first time on TV. He's been, he's been out of business for about a, a, a year or so. Uh, John Smiley, you like, the, you like that move? Uh, I, last, I, last week at this time, it had just happened. I think he's a professional pitcher. And we didn't have very many professional pitchers. So I'm very pleased with that move. The Juden thing, the guy's a strange guy, really strange. And if he doesn't get his act together, he won't pitch anywhere because he's got good stuff. All right, the, the interesting thing about him is that he seems to fit the mold of, of, of Montreal uh, with um, a, inexpensive and all that, but apparently couldn't get along with Alou. He, he, had a, he had a fight, well, he had a fight with, what's their top pitcher's name, Martinez? Yes. He had a fight with Martinez. Well, that's good enough. I know yeah. which one will survive that one. Yeah. Although, Juden's 6'8", 265. I don't know, you know how, much, well, how long would a fight like they, that they last. Had to, they, had to, they had to separate them. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, it's obvious John Hart has, has put the, the uh, onus, I guess, on, on Mike Hargrove. And even though extremely unfair. Right. Why do you say that? And I'll tell you why I say it. All right, I'll listen to you first. Well, I, I think that the, the goals of the team going into the year were to find a top pitcher and a second baseman. Hart didn't do that. Hart, while I'm saying negative about Hart, I'm also saying he made a nice correction, mid-season correction last week. But he also had a duplication of, on the roster. He had, got, coming out of spring training, he had Kevin Mitchell, uh, Seitzer, Chad Curtis, Julio Franco. Uh, only Curtis can play defense, so it didn't give Hargrove any options. Well, if, if he made this deal and it sounded, though, by what he said, just to get himself off the spot, that's shameful, because you mean a deal to make it just to make a deal? A, a deal. He say, oh, "Look, I gave you everything you need now." Right. That's not true. Yeah, right. Because what really lost these games anyway? These last three games we lost, and many, many more. Right. Well, the bullpen. Absolutely, yeah. the bullpen. And he didn't help anywhere in the bullpen. Right. Although, when you think back to the '95, the reason we won is we had Asenmacher and Plunks and Tavares right. setting up Mesa. Right, and Mesa was almost perfect. And they're, if they're, we don't have anybody perfect now, which is understandable, yeah. but you can't blame a manager for that. Yeah. Let's go to, uh, I, I got another, I got something I can blame the manager for, which we'll get in the next break. Greg is in Woodmere. Hi, Greg. Hi, Les. How are you? Pretty good, how are you? Good. I had a question for Hal. Go ahead. Um, Hal, do you think we're going to see Jack McDowell before the end of the season? Is he ever going to get healthy again? I think you'll see him in September. He wants to show that he's healthy because he wants to pitch next year. Somewhere. Oh, yeah, he's not going to pitch here. Yeah. yeah. We don't have him signed for next year, do we? This is the no, end. we don't. Okay. Okay. How's the, and how's, uh, Go on, Greg, I can't hear you. How's Louie and Tavares doing? Tavares is doing exceptionally well. He's become a great – he's done exactly there what he did here. Right. Uh, a lot of those are former Indians. Even Mark Lewis is starting to hit. Jeff Kent, although I, I didn't bemoan losing either one of those guys over See the years. See how wrong you were? Well, I, still, I wouldn't want Jeff. No. no, I'm not going to say I was wrong. The only, I, reason, the only reason nobody beefed about that deal is because we realized, we were told that Williams was so great. Right. And Williams is having a bad year. Right. All right, we're going to come back in a moment, and uh, you'll have to remind me about uh, because of my useless knowledge. I might have forgotten I was going to say something about Hargrove when we come back. If you are going to the ball game uh, any time in the next couple of weeks, there are three locations around uh, Jacobs Field where you can pick these up. These, uh, uh, of course, you got the uh, the ballpark, uh, what do they call it? Ballpark oh, Indians Edition. There you have Pick it up at Jacobs Field, only a dollar. It gives you all kinds of inside information. And in addition to that, they give you pictures. In this case, we've got Omar Vizquel and we've got uh, uh, Oral Hershiser. There's Manny Ramirez on the cover. It's only a buck, but 
In addition to the pictures, you can come on back and uh, take a look on the back with all the statistics of the teams that the Indians are playing, and uh, it's a great buy. Three locations, one out by the uh, Bob Feller statue, the other uh, between Gund Arena and uh, Jacobs Field, and various other places around. Pick them up from Trombetti Enterprises. We'll come on back with Hal Lebovitz, the guy in the know after we take this time out. You're watching more sports in Les Levine, and it's brought to you in part by the Pierre's French Ice Cream Company. All right, Hal, on uh, this day in 1966, what two tried pitchers were named to the All-Star team in 1966? Was it Gaylord Perry? No, it was before Gaylord Perry. How about Sam McDowell and Gary Bell? You're, I think Only you're right. because they, they put the names up. Oh. Yeah, Perry didn't come until uh, into the early 70s. 216 575 is our number. Now, I was going to say something about Mike Harker, yes, who I were. think should continue to be the manager. However, I am appalled at the third base coach and some of the decisions and lack of decisions. Um, there have been, this team can't run. This team has no team speed at all. And uh, Jeff Newman, you know, if you're going to play for the big inning or the three run homer or whatever, you, you don't need to take chances. Uh, the other night, well, last night, if you're watching this live on Cablevision, uh, first and second, and there's a hit to the outfield, and, and justice gets thrown out by a mile. Now, that shouldn't happen. If this team is playing station to station, you don't have to try like that. Well, he was gambling because runs have, are so hard to come by, especially against a pitcher that, that we faced yesterday. Right, Henkin, yeah. And so he took a chance. Tell the truth. Now, you, you, you saw it after the fact. Right. If you had been the third base coach, would you have held him up right away? Yes. There, there was a hard hit ball on AstroTurf. Yeah. And the guy had it just as Justice was making the turn. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, but that's happened so many times this year. And as we have stated in the past, I guess my my point is that next year, if Hargrove is retained and he is under contract, if they don't buy him out, there's going to be a shakeup in the coaching staff. Would you I agree? I think there will be some changes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because the pitch, uh, I don't think they're happy with Mark Wiley, and I don't think they're happy with Newman, although Newman is is buddy-buddy uh, with Hargrove. They drive back and forth to to and from each game. And Newman is considered one of the better third-base coaches well, in the he's game. He's having an off year. Okay. All right, let's go out to uh, Larry, who I believe is in North Olmstead. Hi, Larry. How you doing? Good. How are you? Okay. How's Mr. Levowitz? How are you, young man? Okay. Um, I got a question about the Hall of Fame voting. It concerns, like, Al Oliver when he was on it. Les's show, he was kind of like disenchanted with losing out with 19 votes or something, not getting into the Hall of Fame, and now he's off the list. And um, is there a waiting period for like five years or yeah, something? Yeah, five years from your retirement, except in, in the case of Roberto Clemente. Okay, how about Tommy Lasorda? Well, that's, well five years as an active player. Okay, uh, that's why I was wondering what, what the criteria. Is there any criteria of what you're supposed to, you know, vote on? All right. Well, Hal, Hal is a voter, so go ahead, Hal. When you're supposed to vote on? No. What, what's the criteria to vote? What, when, when they give you the ballot and they give you the, the rules and, and tell us what it is. Well, you look at it and you think, this guy's an all <laughs> Hall of Famer, this guy isn't all of Yeah, but there's also there's rules that govern it, too. Well, the, the main rule that governs it is uh, it's your own judgment and the fellow has got to be a decent person, right. supposedly. There you go. See, in, in Oliver's case, that uh, 19 or 16 votes you're talking about, his first time that he was out, see, there's a rule that says if you don't get 5% of the votes, you're off the ballot after that. And that's to, that's to get rid of, you know, there's a buddy system where, you know, some sports writer might have been friends with a player and says, hey, I, I'm going to vote for you just for fun, even though he doesn't deserve it. Well, in Oliver's case, he happened to be on the same year that three Hall of Famers uh, were voted in. And it was uh, Jenkins, Ferguson Jenkins, Gaylord Perry, and Rod Carew. And so maybe that's all those guys voted for, so there wasn't room for a fourth guy on their ballot. So that's why he was, you know, he was a victim of circumstances. And arguably, he's got Hall of Fame numbers, but I don't think many people would think of him, quote, as a Hall of Famer. All right. You have, you have to have a certain number of votes the first year to qualify for the next right, year. Right, which in this case, Oliver didn't and have. And you can do it for 10 years, and then you're dropped if you didn't make the Hall of Fame. And then you go to the uh, committee. The old timers committee, and right. they can put you on. And the old That's timers committee. Fox got on. The old timers committee is is based, Well, it was very New York oriented, which is one of the reasons Phil Rizzuto got in. Although you told me you would have voted for Rizzuto anyway, or you I did. I sure would have. I saw him play 
uh, for 10 years when I covered the Indians and the Yankees, and I thought he helped make the Yankees. So many great defensive plays. Right. And, and so many things at bat, he would move runners along. And, uh, he's I, one I, of the greatest bunners of all time, right. as was Nellie Fox. Right. right. And I thought he deserved it. Wasn't Al, Al Lopez was on the Veterans Committee, wasn't he? He was, and he dropped off. Okay, why couldn't, how, I think there was only three three members of the committee, is that correct? No, there were about ten. T okay, well. Gabe Paul is on it, or was on okay, it. Why, why couldn't. Bertie Tibbetts is on it. Why couldn't those guys get Mel Harder into it? That's a great question. Every time you ask about Harder, they say, they say he's got a chance, he's got a chance, and he never gets in. I yeah. don't know. Let's go to Mike in Chagrin Falls. Hi, Mike. Hey, Wes, how you doing? I'm well, how are you? Yeah, pretty good. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling I'm, uh, some, an observation I've had about the tribe is is their incredible impatience. At the plate? Yes. Yeah. I've never seen a more impatient club. And the thing that's ironic about it is, is that Hargrove, when he was a player with the Indians, he was the most disciplined, patient right. player there, there I've ever seen. You know, they right. call him the human rain delay. Although I would say that, that Tommy is a pretty, for a power hitter, Tommy right. is a pretty patient hitter. He's too patient. He may be too patient, and Manny, Manny's getting there. But other, the other guys, uh, yeah, it's Matt the free Williams swingers is ridiculous. But if, if you look at the other team, which we don't do, right? They're the, doing the same thing. They're they're swinging at the split finger that's in the dirt. They're swinging at bad pitches. Same thing. In fact, we've had a lot of walks lately. We haven't taken advantage of them. Right. They they just they've left a lot of runners on base and and as, as Hal say that it it's magnified when you don't get that big hit and then you start looking for things like the impatience but uh, I I think that if you're a free swinging team that's what you do and I think our, another major problem this team has is lack of speed we we can't take that extra base very few of the players can yeah Vizquel is about the only one who can and even it. Grissom isn't isn't that great of a base runner oh he's a step behind Vizquel yeah but you take yesterday's game when we have young pitchers like Wright and Cologne, too. These guys, when they get on first, automatically they're on second base. Right, right. They don't keep them close at all. Anything else? Uh, that's it. Okay, thank you for the call. Hey, uh, don't forget, every week you can pick up a copy of the Free Times at any one of 1,200 locations throughout Greater Cleveland. And um, you can do that and find out about City Chatter. Next week I make my debut, Hal. Ooh. Next week as the you, sports you, guy for the Free Times. Do you use a typewriter? Do you use... No, I've, uh, I'm into the computer age now. Are you really? Yeah, I, I haven't figured it out. I have to be told exactly how to, to do it. But I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, also... Uh, uh, but thanks to Pete Gaughan. Pete Gaughan wrote a fine article about us in the uh, Sun Papers today. We appreciate that very much. Hal Ebovitz is with us. Let's go back to the phones. You're on more sports and less Levine. Go ahead. Hi, my name's Mike. I'm from North Olmsted. Hi, Mike. Hey, I really enjoy your program. Thank you very uh, much. The purpose of my phone call is, uh, you know, I'd like to make a comment about Hargrove uh, and Grover. And my situation is uh, we all have to be accountable for our jobs. Uh, if we were working for a corporation or a company, and uh, we were given the tools to do the job, and we are responsible for doing a job. If we don't do it, we're going to probably be reprimanded. We may lose our job. We may uh, get pink slipped. We may be given additional tools to help do our job, but bottom line, we are responsible to do our job. Oh, I know. Hold on. By, by that, in other words, you're saying that Hart gave him the tools, and he should have moved on with it, right? I, I think that's part of it. Okay. Well, uh, I, I think I, that, I, that's fine, but... But that would mean that every major league team, therefore, should win the pennant. By, by your logic, every team leaving spring training has been given the tools, and therefore, therefore, they should all win. And we know that's not possible. Well, I don't think I don't think they all could win. But I, this is my what I'm trying to get at. I think a manager is supposed to be a leader. A manager is supposed to be a trainer and a developer. A manager or a general manager or whatever, whatever position they have, a coach on a team is supposed to help develop, train, give guidance, and also when he has to. Give the spiritual leadership. Well, I, I think and, you know something, Mike. That. Mike, I think you're talking about a college football coach right now. You're not talking about a major league manager. Hal, this is one of your ba favorite things. Oh, I wrote a column about it Monday. Baseball is so different from any other sport. First of all, 162 games. You can't kick guys in the butt every day right. for 162 ball games. Even if you kick them once, that's not going to make them a better hitter or a better fielder. It's not that kind of a ball. It's not that kind of a sport. You don't go out and tackle or block or box out for a rebound. You have to be relaxed. You have to it's be more of a precise sport. Oh, it's uh, very precise. You have to be, uh, you have to be within yourself. You, have you know, you, you call her, uh, uh, Mike, you, you get back to that, and where the previous caller said that uh, some of these players are, are uh, uh, 
impatient. Well, if, if you're uh, given a win one for the Gipper speech all the time, you're going to be impatient and you're going to swing at bad pitches. So I, I, I understand what you're saying. I think it's more than, I think the job is more than that of just a tactician and a strategy guy. But I, I think the reality is that, especially on this Indians team, you got on your everyday starting lineup, assuming Giles is your DH, you got eight everyday ball players who have played in World Series games. So why are they underachieving? Well, they're that, in first Yeah, so let's, first you know, of all, they're in first place. So they're not under, if they're underachieving every other club. Are they building, complacent? Pardon? Are they complacent? Wait, wait, hold on a minute. Hold it. All right, me, go ahead, Hal. Let me talk <laughs> about that. Two, two weeks ago, the, the writers, the, the media, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Kevin uh, Seitzer, right. uh, Hart, everybody is saying they're not trying, they're not working, they're not. Every day if you went out there, Mark East Grissom, after batting practice, after batting practice, went into the batting cage to take more swings. Matt Williams' terrible slump was out early every day taking practice. What more can you do? Yeah. That's what these guys are doing. They're not complacent. What happens in baseball is you get too tight. And there's, there's a misconception among the fans because you watch a game where they don't score, there's no action, and the game is boring. You think they're not trying. Absolutely not true. After I wrote this column Monday, I got several calls, and the calls I got were from former ball players. Everyone said, nice going. It's the people that have never really played the game, never been really involved, that are the ones already beat them over the head, grunt, give them pep talks. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. The best manager I ever covered was Al Lopez. Never had a single meeting. Joe McCarthy, Hall of Fame, great manager. He hardly ever talked to his players. So what do you think the Indians are going to do? What are they going to do? All they, they have got to do is beat Milwaukee and Chicago by one game, and, and then have, we'll see what happens in October. And they have to go on the talent that they've got right, there. Right, right. All right. You okay? I'm fine. Relax. But it bothers Take me. Take his pulse during the break, will you? Please, let me see here. Hold on a minute. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, we checked out his pulse, uh, and he's fine. He's fine. He swam and he jogged today, right? He do. He's incredible. All right, we will come on back. Hey, don't forget a week uh, from... Uh, uh, from tomorrow, if you're watching this live, or this coming Friday, the 15th, be sure to come on down to Mel's Grill before or after the Indians game. It's the Cleveland Indians tailgate party with best kosher hot dogs. Come on down for the hot dog eating contest. Plenty of celebrities in the live auction with all proceeds benefiting Cleveland Indians charities. And if you can't make it to Jacob's Field, best kosher products are available at your local grocery store. Best kosher sports dogs are what Cleveland sports fans are learning to love. Come on down uh, Friday, the 15th of August, for the big tailgate party at Mel's Grill, courtesy of Best Kosher Hot Dogs. We'll come on back with Hal Levovitz, who will relax during this break and uh, name the uh, Hall of Fame quarterback who led Cleveland to the NFL Championship. That's the Cleveland Rams in 1945. Uh, portions of the show brought to you by the Pierre's French Ice Cream Company. All right, Hal, I think you can handle the answer to that question. Bob Waterfield. Bob Waterfield. Was married to Jane Russell. They both lived here. An apartment on Euclid Avenue at the no time. No kidding. Yeah. Jane Russell, the famous famous yeah. movie star? She, she was great. Great gal. Yeah. How'd she like coming to Cleveland? No wonder they moved to, to L.A., the Rams. <laughs> that was <laughs> accidental. That was coincidental. Coincidental? Yeah. All right, what is not coincidental is out of the park, who has moved across the street where they have about four times as much room. And you want to stop in before or after an Indians game, you can stop it out of the park up until about midnight uh, after a game. Actually, they'll stay open as long as you want. In fact, you can go in before the ball game, buy whatever you want, save 10% by mentioning more sports and less Levine. And then uh, you can leave your packages there and pick it up after the ball game. And out of the park at uh, 740 Prospect with an entrance also on Huron. They've got a new stock of sweatshirts, and it's getting cold at night. The sweatshirts are there with embroidered T-shirts. All-star items still on sale and autograph memorabilia at Out of the Park, 740 Prospect, right downtown. Let's go back to the phones for Mike in Brunswick. Hello, Mike. Hi, Les. How you doing? I'm well. How are you? Okay. Good. Uh, I just want to say hi, Le uh, pal. I miss your story. You never cut a kid. It was a great story you had every year. Oh, about cutting a kid. I'm gonna, I think I'll run it this week because high school practice is starting. Yeah. You and run that every year? Uh, I've cut, I've dropped it in recent years, but several coaches, surprisingly, have asked me to run is it. Is that right? Yeah. You ever going to divulge the real story behind that or well, not? That's the story. No, that, I know. The story's okay. exactly as I wrote it. I know that, but the personalities involved? Well, I, the coach that, I, that did it knows who he is. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, go ahead, sir. Les, the question I had for you was, uh, I don't think that the, 
they know the Indians players' personnel. Like, even I know you can't send Tommy home from second base on a base hit to the outfield unless it's going to be a double. Well, uh, yeah, I've got a problem with Jeff Newman. I think he's made a lot of mistakes, and a lot of it is out of frustration. As Hal says, he's trying to get something happening. You've got to pick your spots to do it. If the throw's yeah, off the line, he's... Well, sure, but, but then what do you need a coach for? A coach is the guy who's got to make that decision. Yeah, and he took a chance, and he was wrong. Yeah. And now we're ripping him. It's happened him. more often than not. Well, he held up... Oh, wait, I've been ripping him. Are you ripping him, too? No, his record is too good over okay. the years. He held up Visquell in that game. Fortunately, Visquell happened to score, but right. at the time, I would be tempted to send Visquell. Okay. Have, well, you ever coached I have, base base have I ever coached their base? Yeah, but not at that level. But it's a, t it's a it's, tough call. I, it's, it is a tough call, but, but you know, if they have everything charted out and computerized on a, the, the fact that a guy hits the ball uh, seven feet to the left of the, uh, uh, the left fielder, you know, whatever, they, they know who the, the good arms are out there. Yeah, I would say that on the average, um, I, I could probably live with five, set, having a guy thrown out by a lot maybe five times on, a, on what I would say is a bad judgment call. Anything over five times in a year is, is too much. But do you think he's missed more than five? Yes. I doubt it. You doubt it? Okay. I'm not just saying a guy getting thrown out, because guys can get thrown out and that happens. Yeah. But I think in, in certain situations, you've got you to gotta rein these guys in. You know, and, and as I said, we don't have a lot of great base runners on this team. And we haven't been scoring runs. Yeah. You take chances. Look, after the fact, it was a big mistake. Well, I think if you have first and second and you're down by one and one out, a hard hit ball on an AstroTurf infield to the guy charging in, hey, I'll take my chances to get a fly ball to bring him in the next Was there just one out? One out, one out, yeah. Uh, let's continue on. Jeff is in Cleveland. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Les. How you doing? Oh, First fine. time caller. Really, really enjoy your show. Thank you. I was sir. wondering if you could tell me what happened to uh, Toby Hare. I know that he was our third, ba third base coach last year, and that there was a lot of criticism towards him. I was wondering if you could tell me, was he let go? Yeah, he was let go. go he was ahead. let go, and I think he's working in the Tigers organization now. Oh, was he? Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Thank Th you. Thank you. Yeah, that goes back to Jeff Newman. They brought Newman on to be the bench coach because of the trust that he had in, in, with Hargrove. And they didn't like what Harrow was doing, so they put Newman back in. And now Newman is there again full-time. John Goral is the bench coach. Right. Has, has John Goral, um, has, he, has he made a solid contribution, would you say? Or is it unnoticeable? The, the only way I could tell is why we're there on the bench every day. Because I don't know how much Hargrove listens to Goral. Right. And I don't know how much Goral is projecting himself. But only a person who's there every day could do it. All right. We will take a break. We'll come on back. Hal Lebovitz is our guy in the know. 216-575-0403. More sports and less Levine brought to you in part by the Pierre's French Ice Cream Company. All right, Hal, I'm going to take a chance at that. Who said you can't hit what you can't see? Do you have an idea? Walter Johnson. Walter Big Train Johnson. He managed the Indians, you know. Yes, he did. Not very well, I might add. Funny part, I, I saw the first game he managed, and he won with a squeeze bunt. And what a great manager. And uh, he went downhill after that. <laughs> Walter, big train Johnson. Yeah. Nice, do, um, nice man. That, uh, you can't hit what you can't see. We, in Little League, we always, always used to say that, you know, in the infield, the chatter, you know, hum it in there, babe, <laughs> chuck hard. Do they, big leaguers don't do that, do they? There's hardly any talk. <laughs> There was for quite a while, and just it just back the players just backed away. Is there is there bench jockeying going on anymore? Not as not as much as there used to yeah, be. There used to be some great stuff. Oh, terrific! Yeah. Yeah. You know what's amazing to me is when when you'll see a replay from the center field camera, and let's say a close play at first base, uh, which you won't see by the way at Jacobs Field because they're not allowed to show them on replays. Um, but when, when a play is close or a guy gets a hit. Maybe if it's a home run at the end of the game, you'll see the bench explode and all that stuff. But for the most part, the players just kind of sit there, take it in stride, and don't, you know, they, they don't use body English to have a guy get safe at first or anything like that. Oh, but I, I do like the camaraderie when a, when a player does something good, like moves a man from first to second, right. comes to the bench, and they give him fives. Exactly. I like that. Yeah, I do too. That, and that's rather new. Uh, that never used to be. I, I'll tell you what's new that we now accept, and, and I don't know when it came about, but after a win, when everybody goes out to the field, that's, that's not more than 8 to 10 years old, I don't think. And I think television is a part of that. I do, too. I do, too. But I, I, think, that is, I think it's about an 8 to 10-year-old right. tradition. And it's good. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. The best thing of all is in, in hockey, at the end of a Stanley Cup series, when oh, both yeah. teams go out like that. 
That's the best. Hey, a couple of uh, great restaurants in the greater Cleveland area, including Wexler's Tavern and Eatery, 4555 State Road in Old Brooklyn, about a half mile off the I-480 State Road exit. Don't forget, on Mondays, buy one burger and get one free. Wednesdays, steak dinner for $5.95 all day and all night. Benny Shapiro's getting ready to open up their first uh, new location, a franchise location, next week in uh, Broadview Heights. We'll talk more about that when we get closer. Benny Shapiro's take advantage of the two-for-one specials, as you see, in the Pearlbrook Shopping Center. And uh, our crack, uh, crack producer director, John, was there, right? He, he had a great, great meal, right? Did he see Joe? No, he didn't see Joe. And he still had a great meal at Benny Shapiro's Restaurant. And, of course, Tasty Pizza on Mayfield Road, right, across, right next to Dunn Hardware uh, near uh, Richmond. 449-1252 is the number to call, but in addition to getting the great pizza, uh, you'll want to stop by and register, put your name in the hat to, or in the box, and get a chance to win Indians tickets. Joe gives away three to four pair per week, and uh, no purchase necessary. Just stop in at Tasty Pizza, a Lindhurst tradition since 1958, and, of course, uh, tradition since 1923 is Sokolowski's University Inn with the great home-style cafeteria-style cooking. Call 771-9236, ask for Bernie or Mike, and find out about their on-premises or off-premises catering service from 5 to 500 people at Sokolowski's University Inn, where President Clinton enjoyed lunch on one of his trips here into Cleveland. Let's go to the phones. We'll go to South Euclid and say hi to David. Hi, David. How you doing, guys? I'm well. How are you? Pretty good. Hey, uh, the other day when the Indians acquired John Smiley, uh, John Hart was up there and doing a bit of grandstanding, and he was mentioning teams like the Anaheim Angels and the Milwaukee Brewers and said that if you ask those teams, they would in a heartbeat trade their entire team for our team. Right. Except Hart should have made the deal. He would have had a com team as competitive as the Indians with half the payroll. Well, I think he was trying to say he was in better shape than them, but, but what you've got to do is compare them to the, the teams above them. You know, it's, it's fine to compare yourselves to the teams below, but ask that same question about New York and Baltimore and Seattle. Exactly. Yeah. I, I agree. Hey, Hal, I got a question for you. Okay, David. A couple, uh, couple weeks ago you talked about what a, uh, a loss it would be the day or when Herb Score does bow out as an announcer. In your honest opinion, do you think he's doing a good job? I mean, you listen to the games and you hear mistakes. You hear it. Last week I heard him talking about Tony Bernazard made a great play at second. I heard that too. <laughs> Herbie is Herbie. He's, a, he's the same today as he was when he first started. He made mistakes then. But that's part of that's part of Herb, and, and if you want if you want perfection, you're, you wouldn't have liked Herb a long time ago. Yeah, but nobody noticed because nobody was listening in those days. That could you be. Know, the teams were terrible. Uh, Herb is a dear friend of mine. I, one of one of my closest friends, and I'm not going to knock him. And I think we'll lose something when he's gone two years from now. All right. Thank you for the call. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number. Uh, he he wouldn't accept. It's my understanding that um, that if, uh, giving Tom Hamilton more innings and make him more of a color analyst, I don't think he would accept that, would he? I doubt it. He has great pride, and, right. and he wouldn't be, want to be knocked down from his present role. But he, when he's 65, which is in two years, he's going to go back to the farm and rest. Yeah, so you say he, this year and next year and after the next year? Although it's, he hasn't no, said that, it, I no, mean he, publicly. I, I wrote it. Yeah. It's my understanding that he refused to take a three-year contract. Right. Three-year contract. <laughs> no, you got it wrong, Hal. It's these three, not you those know, three. Right after our show last uh, week when I did this, yes. I went to a band concert to Wiley Junior High Outdoors. Right. Some guy came up to me. <laughs> he agreed with you? I wonder, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> then I realized. He saw we had, that was our big argument. Hal says three is this. I say it's no. this way. So. No, this you one. know what? That might be our uh, email question of the week next week. Is okay. it this way or this way? But her, her refused to take a three-year deal because... He wants to retire when he's 65, yeah. which is in two years. Okay, very good. So um, you'll have to put up with him in and, two years and, with his mistakes. And by the way, um, Jimmy Dudley, who was in Ill, Ill Health, was inducted into the uh, broadcaster's uh, wing at the, at the Hall of Fame this past week at uh, Cooperstown. And, and again, you go back to what we say about Mel Harder, it's too bad that they can't enjoy the fruits of their labor. And you knew my uncle Sam Levine, the, the bowling guy. Mm -hmm. He used to have a thing called Flowers for the Living, mm -hmm. which means, hey, honor these guys where they're around and they can enjoy it. And in Jimmy's case, he's, he's in Ill, uh, I believe, has Alzheimer's right. disease. And it's a shame that, that you know, even Nellie Fox, I knew on his deathbed, was hoping to become uh, a member of the Hall of Fame. Well, there's a, there's a big campaign now to get Gene Hickerson in the Hall of Fame, and I hope it's successful because he deserves it more than a lot of guys that are in there now. Yeah, but, but you know what? When, first of all, a lot of the voters never saw the guy play. And 
offensive linemen are hard to measure. The only way you can, there's no statistics for them, so they can't look at the statistics. The only way you can do it is talk to the guys who played at the same time, find out how they were uh, thought, up, thought upon or thought about um, within the, the, the body of the, uh, of the uh, league itself. I, I don't think I've ever seen a better pulling guard than Hickerson. Right, and Jim Brown, who I think is the greatest of all time, still needed somebody to sure. open up holes for him. So, well, what's the procedure? You know, y you always hear about people getting bothered by these publicity campaigns, the writers. Did anybody, did you, were you, um, I don't want to say a victim, but were you ever the object of somebody's uh, affection as far as, you know, bombarding you with mail and, oh, and sure. you know, gimmicks and things of that sort? I, I get these letters all the time from people that are trying to promote others. Right. Do, does it help? Does well, it, I mean, what do you do when you get them? You throw them in the wastebasket? Well, if I were in a position to help that person, and I thought that person had a legitimate, a legitimate argument to get in, right? Sure, I would try to help. How, I, how can I, you help? Can you talk to your fellow yeah, your fellow exactly voters? Right, yeah. And when you like, do you know? I don't know if you do an informal poll of of the other voters. Do you have a pretty good idea what the results will be before they happen? No way. You don't it's know. Spread out too uh, too far. Yeah. Especially when we vote, which is in December, and we don't see each other in the press box. There's no way to talk to the others. Right. Did you did you vote for Lasorda? That that was do, that was not done by. Oh, us. that wasn't done by you. That's that was right. done by the not Veterans as, Committee. That's right. Not by because he wasn't a player. Uh, of course, uh, Phil Negro was was uh, inducted. With, yeah, I, I you voted, voted for him the first day he became eligible. When you right. win 300 games. Yeah, you, you should be in automatically. You gotta be. In. Don Sutton's gotta be in. So, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, what, what's what's keeping that one back? <laughs> I mean, he didn't have enemies, I don't think. No, he's a very personable guy, and he absolutely deserves it. Right. I right. don't know why. I, okay. He's on my ballot every year. All right. Very good. Well, he deserves it. You, you're right. There are certain milestones: 500 homers, 300 wins. You gotta be in. There's there's some voters that will only vote for one man, or sometimes even none. They want to hold this uh, this thing such sacrosanct, they want to be so, they want to make it so difficult that the only the, the ones that stand out like a beacon get in there. And I think that's wrong because when you look at that list, there's so many almost beacons that are in. Right. Why, why keep these others out? I don't think the word sacrosanct has ever been used on this show before. Well, maybe I used it wrong, <laughs> too. No, we'll find it. No, I think you, you, you did it right. You did it right. Well, you got me worried. Do you ever misspell a word? That's what, uh, my wife is the president of the corporation. Of, of Hal Lebovitz Enterprises? And, right, and she reads my copy, and she checks all the spelling. Right, so you've never made a, a, a typographical error. Well, if I did, error. she did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, very good. Uh, we shall uh, come on back in a moment. I want to tell you uh, about a gentleman's club out on Brook Park Road. Uh, for you uh, gentlemen out there who, uh, sophisticated gentlemen, would like to uh, take part in the, the festivities at uh, Amber's Cabaret. And, of course, uh, they've got luncheon specials, manager specials. And uh, if you want to have an office party or a bachelor party, check it out. And uh, they will make any arrangements you need to give yourself a, a pleasurable, fun time at Amber's Cabaret. Well, come on back one more time. Hal Lebovitz is here. He is the guy in the know. More sports and less living continues. Brought to you in part by the Pierre's French Ice Cream Company. Tomorrow night, Todd Harkins, Brett Harkins, and Brian Holzinger, the first three born and bred Clevelanders who have gone to the NHL. And I believe Todd, Todd or Brett, I'll have to check it out. One was the first uh, uh, Clevelander, born and bred Clevelander, to ever score a goal. Todd, I believe. 1-800-524-MOTO is the number to call for Independence Communications. Independence Communications, the authorized Motorola two-way radio dealer, giving you the confidence you need to have your message delivered. They are Northeast Ohio's premier two-way wireless service with the quality of Motorola Wireless, the secure Privacy Plus feature. They also offer you the confidence in the widest coverage area in Northeast Ohio. Call Independence Communications for your two-way your, uh, two wireless needs, 1-800-524-MOTO, Independence Communications for Confidence in Wireless. Well, the American Heritage Dictionary has flown out of the, out of the, uh, the closet, and we have looked up sac sacrosanct, Hal, <laughs> and you are correct. It is inviolably sacred, a shrine. Yeah, these guys, there's nobody could make that. Right, right. You saw the babe, didn't you? Yes, I did. I think I told you once before that I sold him 12 hot dogs. Before, in uniform? No. He wasn't playing that day. He was at League Park. He was sitting behind the Yankee dugout, sitting with Lefty Gomez's wife. She was an actress, June O'Day. Wow. And I was selling hot dogs that day. 
And he was my best customer. <laughs> Sold 12 12 of them. hot dogs. Now, there's something in here. In uh, Wait a minute. It's over here. About, I believe it was in 1932. Or 30, uh, when was the All-Star game here? 35? 35. In 1935. It's in here somewhere. Where they were complaining about the, here you go. Uh, yes, 1935. This is uh, in the Frank Derry publication of Cleveland Baseball, the All-Star Tradition. Uh, in 1935, the, uh, do you remember what the cost of a hot dog was in the stands? Ten cents. I'm just going to... Okay. I have, I have a story about that. All right. Too. Well, apparently in the All-Star game in 1935, the scalp... You had some scalpers amongst you, Hal. You were selling them... You were one of these guys? No, so, we they were selling them for 15 cents. No, we sold Baby Ruth candy bars. Yeah. Supposed to sell for 10 cents. We sold for 20 until we got caught. In the fifth inning. 1935? Mm -hmm. 1997? Statute of limitations about over, yeah. you think? I wrote about it. Oh, well, here you go. I mean, here's the thing. They, the, um, they were told to sell them for the regular uh, 10 cents, but some of these uh, we bad all, guys. No, we all got together. This was depression. We all got together. We all 35, realized, the depression was over, Hal. Oh, Don't give me that. No, no way. No way. That was the heart of the depression. 35? Yes, sir. We'll have to check on that. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was you, already you can, in office can, you, for three years. You can check that out. Well, an extra an extra dime was big money. And when I taught school in '38, yeah, I, my first contract was thirteen hundred dollars a year. Coached all three sports, home room, six six classes a day, homeroom guidance and study hall. That meant I was getting paid twenty five dollars a week. And let me just tell you something, Hal. I've been told that you have that original. Thirteen hundred dollars somewhere. I wish. I wish. <laughs> so you were amongst the uh, contributors, the uh, guys illegally yeah. scalping baby we, Ruth bars. We, I, uh, we got together and we raised the price till we got caught. And right. And what they do? That was about the fifth inning. They made us go to back to ten cents. Oh, that's that's not that. That's sort of like what happened to Barry Switzer, so, pretty so, much. So from then on, <laughs> I watched the game. <laughs> so how much? Let's see. Now, how much would you uh, take in and pocket in, on a game in, like in that? In those days. On a, on a ten cent candy bar, we made one cent. We got ten percent. Okay, so you throw on you an extra sell, dime. You had to sell a hell of a lot of candy to make right. a buck. I understand that. So this was a chance for a killing, and we all took it. I understand that. So on a normal day, how much would you make? If I made a buck, it was a big day. A dollar was, sure, a, big it was day? a big day. I, you're talking <laughs> about you, you're talking about the, the the hot dogs. Yes. I was I was selling Coke, Coca Cola at League Park one day. Right. And the fellow that I was selling it to, he wanted a bottle, uh, bottle of Coke. In those days, we didn't have to pour it in the cup. They right. Had, they had the bottles right, right. there. Right, you could throw it right at the umpire That's if you right. wanted to. they did. And uh, the guy said, boy, I'd like to have a hot dog. Now, we could buy the hot dog for a nickel. Ah. Those who worked there, we got it for a nickel. So you bought it Went, for yourself. So I, f I figured I'd go down the concession. We're finding out the more and more. concessionaire bought it for a nickel, sold it to the guy for a dime. Oh, man. And as I'm coming out, Jack Garber, the boss, Caught you? Saw me with the hot dog while I'm holding the hot dog. So I took a bite of the hot dog. <laughs> the hot dogs weren't kosher. Right. So I couldn't eat it. Right. So I th as soon as he oh, you should have had a best kosher hot I dog. I wish. So as soon as he turned away, I had to throw it in the wastebasket, and I couldn't give it to him, and I was out the nickel. <laughs> Quickly, Barry and Lynnhurst. Hi, Barry. Hello. <phone rings> Who's not there anymore? I hurried up to get Barry from Lynnhurst in as the last caller, and he hung up on us. Well, that's all right. So you've now admitted... Uh, several uh, misgivings or, or misdoings over, I wasn't over your perfect career. As, I wasn't perfect. But all those Did you ever cheat on your expense account? No, I didn't. Hell? No, I didn't. All those mistakes I made, all those things I did when I was a kid, yeah. I suddenly realized, this is the truth, I suddenly realized these are things are wrong, and I stopped doing things that are wrong. Well, there you have it. Confessions from hell. At least I've tried. <laughs> I've tried to be a good boy. Yeah. And I hope and I you've, succeeded. And you've lived a ripe old age, and you will live another 40 years, I predict. I'd like to live to tomorrow. Right? <laughs> Hal Levovitz, the guy in the know. We'll do this again next Thursday, okay? Good Lord willing, well, and you will. All right, very good. We will uh, see you tomorrow night with the hockey guys, sports professionals on Monday. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent. <laughs>